are Manchester United close to contending for a league title? I'm going to give my reasonings as to why or why we may not be. Let me know in the comment section below what you think. Drop a like and subscribe if you're new. Now, I just got done watching the game against Tottenham where Manchester United in the first half had a 2-0 lead and squandered it all in the second half to end up dropping two points and only gaining the one away from home. Now, statistically, it may look like Manchester United had stranglehold on the game, a lot of control. But to me, on the eye, it never really seemed like that from start to finish. I think Manchester United cheaply in the first half, you know what, I'm, Maybe I'm being a bit harsh. I think in moments we did have decent control in the game. But we cheaply gave the ball away in the first half speaking. Tottenham got in behind a lot and they committed numbers forward, which opened up the opportunity for us to exploit that on the counter-attack, which is where we got our two goals through Jaden Sancho and Marcus Rashford. So that was the good part of our game. I think in the second half also, we lacked a bit of control and that allowed Spurs to pin us back in our own box. And they were a lot more patient in their build-up. I thought in the first half, they committed a lot of numbers forward. They were a bit gung-ho, so that opened up that counter-attacking opportunity. In the second half for Manchester United, there weren't many opportunities to get forward. Tottenham were very patient in their build-up, and they still found a way to get those goals and punish Manchester United for the mistakes that we made. So... That's one reason. I think Manchester United, even with the likes of Casemiro, uh, Christian Eriksen, Bruno Fernandes, I think we lack control all over the pitch, def in the defensive region, midfield and attack. Number two, I think our attack is very weak, right now at least. We've relied on the goals of Marcus Rashford. I think he's done superbly this season. We can see that he's starting to burn out ever so slightly, but we need more. And I don't think just the striker is going to fix that. Now, our chance creation, our goals in general, and I think I mentioned it in the last video about Anthony Martial, scoring goals has been a real problem for Manchester United in quite a while. And we can't just rely on Marcus Rashford to do so. We can't just rely on our attackers to do so. We need midfielders to chip in and defenders will chip in from time to time as well. But I think... Having two strikers in Anthony Martial, who isn't reliable and fully fit. Veghorst, who hasn't been able to get within the goals. Anthony, in the Premier League, except for, I would say, the beginning of his Man United tenure, hasn't really done a lot in terms of scoring. Jadon Sancho, he scored a, a few goals here and there, but not on a consistent basis. We need a front three that are a constant threat every single week when it comes to scoring goals. We need midfielders. I think Bruno Fernandes can score goals, definitely. He's in a little goal drought right now. We need more from midfield that are able to contribute. Casemiro has done so a few times, but still, we don't score enough goals that a top team needs to score and able to contend for a Premier League title. I think defensively, we do need a few more pieces in order to shore it up. I think a big part of my focus is strength in depth. Sometimes a starting 11 can be good enough for you to win most games in a Premier League season. But where you need to reach the next level is who you have to replace those starting players. So the players that are coming off the bench every week sometimes need to replace those guys that are relied upon or maybe injured in order to do a job and they can just plug in straight away and you don't even notice the other person's missing. Those are the players you need in order to be a top team and a consistent team at that. I know I said I was going to do a more in-depth video on the ownership situation of Manchester United sale, but that is yet to come. I do want to throw that into this video, however, because I think that is a big part of why Manchester United haven't been successful for as long as we haven't been. Or there have been a lot of inconsistencies. Let me leave it at that. Everything starts from the top, in my opinion. So the culture that is set, a lot of people speak about Sir Alex and David Gill leaving at the same time in 2013. And I think that was very big. I've watched podcasts numerous times now throughout the years that have suggested that the culture within Manchester United after them leaving significantly changed for the worse. 
And sometimes that affects the players, the, the canteen staff, the, the kit men and ladies, all of the people working within that tight-knitted institute. Maybe it isn't even as tight-knitted as it used to be. And once again, that contributes to the success on and off the pitch. I think there needs to be a strict culture for players, uh, whether it's the academy players, women's team, the men's team, in order for everything to be in tip-top condition, just like they used to be, not just on the pitch, but off the pitch once again. There needs to be standards set. There need, we need to have personnel that operate to, to the best of the club matters in the end of the day. What the club needs them to do, whether it's transfers, evaluating the right players and buying them at the right time, which I think is really important and prevents us from spending hundreds of millions of pounds on players and overpaying on them. Most importantly, the wage budget needs to be fixed significantly, I think, for players to... Because right now, I look at Manchester United, and if I was a player going to Manchester United, I would look at the wages of certain players and I would say, listen, I'm not receiving under a certain amount because this player is getting that and that player is getting that. And I feel like a lot of the time with the agents that Manchester United approach, it's easy to leverage those kind of things because Manchester United's wage budget isn't really accurate to the output a lot of the players are delivering on the pitch. And that is a massive problem. With the ownership situation, once again, we're in the middle or we might be even beyond that when it comes to the sell process and it's been very quiet in the last couple of weeks which concerns me because I felt like I remember a couple of weeks ago we were supposed to hear some news regarding the, the latest stage I think we were in the third stage at the time and since then I just haven't heard a lot we've heard some news come out from the Sir Jim Radcliffe situation which is not good news in regards to fan-led ownership or including the fans or wanting to get rid of the Glazers completely. And then we have Yassim bin Hamad Altani, I believe, who has been relatively quiet in regards to news coming out in the last couple of weeks. So I almost feel like as a fan, we've been left in the dark. Whether that will change in the coming days or weeks, who knows? But the ownership, getting rid of the current Glazer ownership in particular and rebuilding the culture from top to bottom on and off the pitch for me is an integral thing when it comes to club success. Also, one thing I forgot to mention on this same topic as well is rebuilding the facilities, training facilities to make sure that the players coming in, the academy players have a great environment to grow in and, and learn in. You want to go into work feeling rejuvenated, feeling happy to go into it. And I feel like right now, Manchester United have fallen behind the standards when it comes to all of these other teams getting state-of-the-art facilities. To be real, we should have had that many, many years ago. But once again, a lack of investment within the club and a lack of vision when it comes to innovation has contributed to us falling behind. So I just wanted to provide a few examples for me as to why I think Manchester United are quite a while away from being legitimate and consistent title contenders. Let me know what you think in the comment section below and you can also provide some more examples and we can chop it up in the comments and see what you think. Maybe you might think the total opposite to me. That's the beautiful thing about a debate and converse with the community. So be sure to drop a like on the video, subscribe if you're new, share to your friends and frenemies. And until the next time, I'll see you lots in a bit.